<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Welcome to Both Mics. Hey, folks. Both Mics is a show about nothing and everything. That over there is Mike Sofka. And that's Mike Taylor. And together, we are Both Mics. Both Mics. Welcome to show number 56 of Both Mics Heard Everywhere. Podcasts can be heard. Like iHeartRadio. We can find you on uh, Podbeam. <laughs> YouTube, you name it. Uh, every Friday night, we're usually hanging out on twitch.tv slash both mics, usually around 7 o'clock on the East Coast. That would be what? 4 o'clock on the West Coast? That's awfully early. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. You, hey, they mics, chose to live there. I didn't. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're all going to fall into the ocean anyway. Not our problem. I'm going to buy beachfront property in Utah. Exactly. That'll teach you. <laughs> What's happening, Mr. Safka? How's life? How's things? Awesome. Yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. Long week. Crazy week. But, uh, you know, weekend's here. Happy to hear. Good. And good. Uh, let's go. So what, what's on our agenda today? Well, I don't want to start off on a, on a down note, but there's this story that I, I just can't get past. This young lady <laughs> here is disappeared. Her name is Gabby uh -oh. Potato. Have you heard about yeah. this story? I, a little bit here and there, and like, it just kind of, kind of real weird that it, like her supposedly her boyfriend, like, is surfaced and he's like, I don't know, and then like their 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 RV or van or something is like in Tampa, Florida, and everybody's like, so what's going on? Well, so, from what I gather, yeah, the, the this uh, young lady here, she. Well, what is she? She's uh, like 20, 21, something like that. And her and her right. boyfriend go right. on this countrywide vacation, uh, uh, apparently uh, driving in this van. And apparently he has a place in Florida. And apparently they started from New York. And I, I don't know if she's from there or what. I haven't gotten that deep. But yeah. apparently um, they were in the zone around Yellowstone National Park. And I know the area well. And there's yeah. an area that they were in, um, and it's got a it's got a weird name for the area. They're calling it the Zone of Death, and the reason why they're calling <laughs> okay. it that this is where she, her she was last known to be located, and they're calling it the Zone of Death because it's hard to be prosecuted for crimes if you do one in this area because of our constitutional rights to have a jury by our peers within a 50 square mile radius there's nothing there's no people so they're saying oh, wow. the ability not to draw on a jury could handicap or cripple this situation because there's nobody that lives in that wyoming district of courts and the state of idaho is, is what it comes down to there so it's okay. it's kind of a weird thing it's kind of an anomaly and there's also a uh like a this is like a mystery tour this is like a map of where they've been and what they've done and i'm looking at this and i'm like holy shit because my kid is doing something like this he's like a digital right, right. nomad type and this is kind of like what they were doing stopping and camping they have a van that's decked out and they're you know they're doing everything on right, youtube right. they it's on youtube i think it's nomadic static but static is spelt with a k at the end instead of a instead of a c, c. so wow you know you could check that out and it's just a bad situation and yeah from what i've heard and what i've seen they are gonna you know look at the boyfriend fiance whatever you want to call them i just I find the whole story just fascinating, but I'm trying not to get too close to it because I can see myself getting attached to this story, kind of like the uh, Casey Anthony type thing, you know, something that's so always you, in you, the You need to do the Nancy Grace with Casey Anthony? Yeah, no, I don't need that. <laughs> well, good, good. Yeah, yeah you know, while, she was, while Nancy Grace was here, my sister went down and met her and then she put her on the phone to call my mom because that was my mom's favorite show or whatever and my my Nancy uh, Grace? yeah yeah so donna in her wheelchair rolls over and she ends up by the courthouse and she sees her doing her thing outside the courthouse or whatever and of course right. donna appears you know to have the attraction thing because she's a nice looking young lady she happens to be in a wheelchair and you know she gets a lot closer to celebrities and and things of that nature because of that and i'm not saying right. that in a bad way she's using the power you know not many right. people would flip that script so she's using that and she starts talking to her and telling her her mom's her biggest fan but her mom couldn't make it you know what i can call my mom on the phone will you say hi to her and <laughs> really? and 
yeah. And she goes, okay. And so Donna dials it up and she hands her the phone and she's like, Arlene, this is Nancy Grace. And my it's mom's wild. like, yeah, sure. Right. Whatever. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. She thinks it's me or one of my other brothers screwing with her. Well, so yeah. she, you know? she spent like three minutes on the phone with Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace was trying to convince her that she was Nancy Grace, and my mom was not having any of it, man. Shoving it right back. Yeah, right, whatever. Who is this? Is this Michael? You know, whatever she was saying. So. Between between you and your two brothers, and I don't know if your other sister is like that, but, yeah, you know, you, you guys kind of set a precedent there. <laughs> you know? Just saying. Don't want don't to throw anyone under the bus or anything, but, yeah, you guys kind of kind of did it. So, Yeah. Did, did, so Donna got at least got a picture, right, and was able to show mom. Hey, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I'm 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 sure it was. I'm sure. <laughs> I forget that. I don't think she was able to get back on the phone with her or anything. But anyway, pretty funny thing here. So what what do you think Disney World's worst park is? Um, and I'll define worst as like. Oh, well, there I go with the, with the graphic. I gave it away. <laughs> here. The Motley Fool is calling Disney's worst park Epcot, and they're saying it's, yeah. they're doing like a massive upgrade on it. They're they're changing a lot of stuff, a lot of construction going on in and around Epcot. There, have you have you and been? It, have you seen? Have you heard? It needed it like twenty years ago. You know, they, you, you walk into Epcot, you got the big golf ball, and then you got these two things on the side. You got something west and something east, and they've been virtually empty since I've ever gone there. And then like the first time I've been to Epcot was like 88. Right. And it was six years after it opened. Right. And there, and there was things and exhibitions sure. going and on. It was fascinating. It was, Ooh, one day I'll be talking to somebody like on a TV. Wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a computer on my wrist. <sighs> yeah. Welcome right. The, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So supposedly now they're tearing some of the, those down and they're like building new things and 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 all that and, and like I said it needed it 20 years ago and uh, they're putting in Garden uh, Galax Guardian of the Galaxy ride which is the old Exxon Mobil ride Universe of Energy that had the dinosaurs. Speaking of which, let me tell you a quick story. Epcot. Going through, you've been on Universe of Energy, right? You get on there, and Ellen's on Jeopardy, and all that. It's crap. like a people mover type ride, right? Yeah, like it exactly. Just keeps it's a big gigantic thing, and you kind of go through. Yeah. And <clears throat> Ellen's on Jeopardy, and then the big door opens, and you start right. going through. And they tell you about how petroleum basically was not invented, but how it was made and produced, and and why it's it is what it is and where it is. Well, um, they tell one version of it. I'll leave it at right. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it's all not right. all fossil fuel. It's not. It's. Do you really think there was that many dinosaurs to run our cars for like a hundred years already? Come on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, something. Right. Well, all right. So that you, you go through, and it kind of kind of looks like the Rainforest Cafe, but it has dinosaurs. Yeah. And it has like, all this stuff, and I'm like, you know, this would make a cool restaurant. <laughs> You sound like me. <laughs> right? This would make a cool restaurant. So what do I do? I go trucking back to my friends at the Green Forest Cafe. I'm like, you know what would be a cool restaurant to have? You know, the universe of energy? Just like that, but with dinosaurs. So it's kind of like this, but different. Right. Same thing. And what, five years later? Yeah. We have T-Rex fucking restaurant. Yeah. Now, did, did Mike open his mouth to the wrong person? Probably. Yeah. Because they're owned by the same freaking company. At least they could have given you a twenty dollars gift card or something for the idea. Right? Shit. Yeah. Wow. I got I got an escort. <laughs> well, they're they're saying they're uh they're fixing up this attraction. We talked about this in previous shows called the Land. Yeah. And anyway, they're, they're talking about investing in Disney and all this other stuff because it's on the Motley Fool. But I just found it interesting that someone actually referred to one of the Disney parks as the worst park and i'm trying to think you know you could go to a lot worse parks and it began to you know my mind began to to to, to trickle back and i can remember though in the 80s my grandparents would come to visit donna and i were working at 
at Disney. So they would come to visit and they would say, oh, well, we're going to be in Epcot. Why don't you come meet us at Epcot after you get out of work? And I'm like, oh, freaking Epcot. Oh, you know, that's the way I felt. There, was, there wasn't no roller coaster. There wasn't anything fun about it. Right, it right. Flowers well, and yeah. music and history and culture and different countries. I didn't want any of that crap. I was a teenager. I was exactly. around 20 years old. Screw that. That sounds like school. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing that made uh, Epcot attractive to, to people that work there or, you know, third-party participants was the, the whole uh, thing of drinking around the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You go, you go clockwise and you go to Mexico and you grab yourself a margarita. Up next is Norway, so you grab yourself a beer. Yeah. In China. A little, little sake yeah. in China. Work your way to Germany, get another beer. You go to America, you know, you, boom, 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 boom. 13 countries, 13 drinks later. You're oh, crawling to your car in the uh, in the goofy parking lot. When we were at the RFC, Ron and I would sometimes go over and we'd start that, but we'd end up just sitting in England and it was a park bench. Like there was that pub, there was a red yeah. telephone booth and there was like a park bench. So we would yeah. go into England and we'd get a couple big bass ales or something like that. And we'd sit on the park bench and we'd start talking about people. We were people watching, but we right. were talking very loud. And people would stop and gather around us and think we were some sort of entertainment that was put on the bench because the crowd would start laughing, the crowd would be involved and everything else. I'm like, That's man, we're going to get fired here. We're going to get in trouble. Right. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. My funny. sister, my, my niece just turned 21. So my sister being the responsible parent she is made t-shirts for her and all the younger kids. And brought right. them all on a drinking. Oh, I, we're teaching the young, whatever. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. It just, I think it's kind of funny. It's kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know many people that would do that. You know, bring the younger kids along, drinking around the world. But I think she was planning ahead because I think she was being smart. They need somebody to drive home. Yeah, yeah. So no, I get it. Now you, you mentioned your your niece just turned twenty one. Yes. You want to feel old? Yes, I'm you already. And went to the, you and I went to the Motley Crue concert in West Palm Beach in 2000, late July. Yes. My uh, my niece was born while we were in West Palm Beach, and she wow. just turned 21. Wow, that's crazy! She just turned 21. <laughs> and she was born that that particular night. <laughs> Give yourself a pat in the back. And and we were talking a little bit before we started today off the air. We were talking about like leftover food that's in the room the night before and eating after breakfast right. we did that with the pizza i think that we ordered that night yes we, had, we, ate, we ordered pizza before we went because we knew we had to eat something yeah and that didn't stop us but yeah, and the thing is we didn't eat any of the pizza <laughs> we, we... <laughs> by the time the pizza came we had to go <laughs> no it's, dude we drank in the room and of course i had one too many because you made me drink one too many i, I was drinking then... on the way you were driving i remember and yeah. It, it, why was I driving? Yeah, well, some other show. Okay. <laughs> and I was driving. My my I, vehicle. Yes, in your vehicle. <laughs> and we stopped at the pizza place. Took, it was buy one, get one free pizza. We put them in the back seat. Oh. And there they sat until the next day. <laughs> Maybe we took them back into the room. I don't know. I, I thought we were <laughs> pizza the next morning somehow. I, I could be wrong. I know we were doing shots of Goldschlager and shit like that. Now, oh. Like 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 Lisa, that didn't agree with you very much. No, I can't. After that night, I can't drink it. And the thing is, I didn't know it was cinnamon. I don't like cinnamon. I'm not a cinnamon fan. I'll, I'll, I'll eat cinnamon sugar donuts, but I'm yeah. not a cinnamon fan. And just like gum and candies and fire and hot balls and all that shit. Fuck it. No, <laughs> not a cinnamon fan. Speaking of the resorts here, these two young ladies here are on a ride. They're on the Harry Potter ride at yeah. Universal, and they were stuck on the ride for a long while. And the one friend said to the other, "Hey, wonder what the while the ride's going. Hey, I wonder what this place looks like with the lights on." And seconds later, the thing shut down and the oh, lights came on. <laughs> <laughs> so they sat there and then they started to roll back and they got nervous because it was rolling back to a portion on a track that wasn't connected and it right. stopped. It and they went, off. Yeah, they went backwards and all that stuff. So it was just, it was funny to me. There's a picture of the, the ride there. Let me pull this up here. I think it's uh, it's it's a certain Harry Potter ride. Don't they have more than one Harry Potter ride there? 
Yeah, now they do. I, I haven't been there since the subsequent uh, Harry Potter rides and the train came along. So it's it's been a while since I've been there. I, I can't even freaking remember. It's got to be probably 2013, 2012. So close to freaking 10 years. So those two girls got Eight. off the ride after being rescued off the ride. And if you by the time they made it off the ride and back around toward the front of the yeah. ride, the ride was up up and operational, so they got back in line went on the ride again. Wow. <laughs> that wow. takes big ones. Hey, you were oh, just yeah. stuck on this thing. What do you want to do? I want to go well, back on it. <laughs> well, we, we talked about Cedar Park in the past. Cedar that, Point? That Cedar, yeah. Cedar yeah, yeah, Point. yeah. It happened to me, too. And, uh, uh, well, Cedar Park is in Texas, but Cedar oh, Point okay. is in uh, Sandusky, Ohio. We talked about the, the drag strip. Yeah. The dragster, yeah. 180. 23 miles an hour, yep. 300 and whatever, 400 and something feet high. I rode backwards on that one, I remember. I, I, I didn't. I was hoping we would. That'd be cool. Well, the but, first. Uh, I, was on, I was online for three hours and 10 minutes to get on that ride, which is nothing in comparison to you. And <laughs> it, it broke down three times while yep. I was online because it was, it was literally weeks after it opened. It was brand new. Yeah. And uh, I figured, you know, plan a vacation. Let's get this done. Let's do it. And uh, my kids both went on it. God, 2003. So they were, they were 13 and 13 and 15 when they went on it and they, they rode 39 roller coasters that, that summer vacation. That's awesome. That's but what you're supposed thing, to do at that age. Yeah. But the darn thing broke down three times, but hell, we went on it anyway. That's right. Exactly. That, you know what? It's almost like going to one of those roadside carnivals. You're like looking at the guy operating the thing. And you're like, this is the guy who put this thing together. I don't yeah. know if I want to get on it. That adds to the, to the anxiety, to the, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is going to be a scary friggin' ride. It actually is when you look at the dude who built it. You're like, right. oh my God, yeah. this guy put this shit together? Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So. That's funny. Hey, um. So, have you ahead. ever been on a, a ride that, that broke down or stopped or anything like that? The lights went on? Yeah, I'm sure it happened once or twice at Disney on the Haunted Mansion and stuff like that, you know. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't think of anything that the lights went on. I know if like I've been inside Space Mountain. Space Mountain, you that, yeah. That people mover thing, and you can yeah. kind of when they're doing uh, work on it. Yeah. You can see they have all the lights on, and that's that's kind of a scary erector set to look yeah, at. Yeah, it doesn't look like what it feels like. It just looks yeah. like some sort of roadside carnival ride in a black building. I'm yeah. Like, well, this is it. This no. Thank God they dressed it up with sounds and lights and TV <laughs> right? shit because I wouldn't ride this thing. And that, that yeah. was back in the day. You would you would stay online for forty five minutes an hour or so to go go on Space Mountain. That was the thing to go on. And I was like, oh yeah, my it's, God. I remember when it like first opened in the in the mid seventies because it didn't open when in seventy one when the park opened, and it was like all the talk in elementary school. Ooh, so and so went to Space Mountain. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what time it is? What time is it? Time to uh oh. It's a pretty good robot. He's a little bit of an alien, too, but I think he's mostly... He's an alien robot. You could be an alien robot, right? But not all robots are domestic. I computed the aliens. They are capable of sinister and dangerous acts. You weird alien man! All right, the alien update. This is the portion of the show where we talk about the aliens. We talk about guys like Musk, Bezos, Bill Gates. We talk about all these cats that are obviously aliens because, well, they're too smart. They do too much stuff to advance our culture, society. Mega inventions deal with mega millions and billions of dollars in contract with the U.S. government on technologies and new and changing technologies. These guys are obviously from another planet. There's no friggin' way... They can be from here and have all this success. I mean, there's 7 billion people on the planet. These handful of guys know how, know everything better than everyone else. Stop. Right. Stop. Exactly. They're aliens. They're aliens. And there's a couple of them right there. There's Jeff Bezos and our friend Elon Musk. Did, and, was there a pissing match this week? You know, it was pretty cool because Bezos, I feel, kind of sent an olive branch out. And I think Musk was like, 
yeah, whatever, fuck you. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. This is according to page6.com. Jeff Bezos can graduate space rival Elon Musk on historic mission. And it goes on to say that, you know, he tweeted or put out there, congratulations to at Elon Musk and at SpaceX team on their successful Inspiration4 launch last night. Another step towards a future where space is accessible to all of us. So Thank Musk you. replied, Thank you. That was it. <laughs> that was the end of the thing, right? <laughs> no, uh, you know, whatever. So, like, this was on the 16th. We're, the, today's the 17th. If you're listening to this a little bit later, this is, you know, give you a time type thing. And so there's more government contracts come out. There's more stuff. There's more news coming out. My computer's loading slow here as I'm trying to, to get to it. Here we go. So Elon Musk at the same time is taking away some of that sunshine that was put on he's saying well Elon Musk says on twitter that the starlink will enter its next phase in october in other words they're going to take it off this beta testing and they're going to put it on live so he said he's trying to bring internet service out of the beta by the end of the summer which is october in his book the first starlink satellite was launched in 2019 but the service has since gathered over 90,000 users so that's all good that's all fun and there's tweets going back and forth and everything. Well, the story gets a little better. Yes. Musk comes out and says that um, the reason why... It, Bezos comes out and he puts money behind the scientific endeavor that they have going on. Where they're going to be doing this testing and it's all chemicals and viral and all this lab type stuff he's going to hire these scientists he's going to pay them a million dollars a year each and they're going to find these answers to these diseases bacteria, viruses chemicals stuff like that so musk says so what when it doesn't work you're going to sue death <laughs> you know it's, <laughs> I, I just it's, so then later it comes, that one came over the bow. Whoa. Yeah. So then later, like, you know, I, I guess Bezos was awarded a new government contract for something that did deal with Blue Origin now because he's suing the federal government, saying Blue Origin's not getting a fair chance, and he got a twenty-six and a half million dollar contract from the government now, and so I don't know if that's in relation to the lawsuit or what, but I'm thinking we're missing the we're missing we're working too hard here, Mike. We just need to sue the government for like a hundred million dollars and take a settlement for like thirty million, like like Bezos. What do you think? Are you in? I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. I just think it's hilarious that these two keep jabbing at each other. Bezos, the the one who's obviously getting the crap beat out of him on a daily basis by Musk, in every which way and form, and with the the, the jabbing and the poking, he apolog You know, he he reaches out the olive branch, and Musk is like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah I, I if, if if i could be one dude right now i, I would be elon musk why not right and, and the thing is he, he's at a point now is like what does he have to lose you know he can it, it, it's not like he's gonna go broke let's put it that way he, he he probably couldn't go broke if he tried imagine being in that predicament that would be nice yeah that'd be a good problem to have Hey, I just got the text here from our guy. Our guy, uh, Mike Stradamus, is pulling up here. So let me oh, get cool. his stuff set here because you know how antsy yep. he gets. If I don't have his music just right and everything else. And by the way, Karen, <coughs> Karen, yeah, make sure you put a shirt <laughs> a new on. Intern? That, that a, tank top isn't going to work. You know he's going to be here. A, yes, put a sweater on or something. I know it's warm put, over put here. Put a sweater on. All right, hang on. Let me let me let me do this here. Let me get this going. Cue up the music, and I'm gonna go open the door and get Mike Stradamus here. I'll be here.
are you? I'm doing great, sir. Welcome, Mike Stradamus. Thank We've you. Been waiting. Thank you. <clears throat> We've been waiting to hear your infinite wisdom. I have your envelopes right here. Mm. All of them. They have been hermetically sealed, as you can see, and stored in a mayonnaise jar, and left at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando since noon today. Hmm. No one knows the contents of these envelopes, but you, in your borderline and infinite wisdom, without ever seeing the contents, you, and you alone, know the answers to these questions I have inside these envelopes. Sir, I present to you your first envelope. Ah, thank you, thank you. Oh, I think it's it better and better each time. It's almost like a hot jello when you're going through the internet there. So I have the answer <laughs> to the question in this envelope without even opening it. I'm gonna give you the answer to the question here. Yes, the answer. The answer is a little space, a little space. A little space. Open up the envelope, pop out the question. What does a claustrophobic astronaut need? <laughs> a little space. All right, all right. Hey, Mike, may you have first, may you have a first class ticket on the next rocket to the, to the sun. How about that? Awesome. Near your next envelope, sir. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. The next answer a pair of loafers a pair of loafers a pair of loafers envelopes are hard to open here what'd you do oh they're hermetically sealed i forgot they're hermetically sealed what do you call twin millennials <laughs> a pair of loafers, a pair of loafers. Uh, hey i wanted to give you a blessing about this one but yeah okay I have your last envelope. Right ah, here. the final envelope. Thank you. Thank you. The answer is cheek to cheek. Cheek to cheek. cheek. To cheek. Open it up here. What is the most popular dance at a nudist resort? <laughs> and with that, I ah. bid you a fond farewell. I'll give you a final blessing, Michael. May you only fart on the slow dances. Oh, Lord. I told you to put on a sweater. Yes, but <laughs> when you tuck the sweater up inside your tank top and crank it, what did you expect? This is what this guy does every time he comes here. He arrests. Yes, I know. I know. All right. All right. We're, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll get it figured out. All right. Tell John Morgan I'll call him back. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's we fine. Everything's fine. Cool. Oh, there goes my microphone. Hold on a minute. We have a catastrophe. Hold on. You're gonna have to say something while I adjust this. Like here. what? Like hey, <clears throat> hey folks, uh, if you want to see us live, we're on live at Twitch.tv/slash both mics. Pretty much every Friday around seven o'clock, we uh, we do a two-hour show, so you can come and see us anywhere between seven and nine. We're also available on YouTube. You can go to Anchor.fm, Castro, Deezer, Castbox, Woo! Stitcher, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. To say Alexa, I want to hear both mics now. And guess what? You'll get both mics now. Nice. But yeah, nice. live every Friday. twitchtv slash mics. Smash the subscribe button and be a douchebag. Nice. Send us some money. Right. Hey, we'll send you a sticker whether you send us money or not. Just ask for one. Right. How about that? There's a sticker. A sticker. You know what's cool about these stickers? Hmm. Is pretty much you can put them anywhere, and they're not like 
look at me, look at me, look at me stickers. They're yeah. not flashy. Right. They're not cartoony. Exactly. They actually they actually look like they're supposed to be there. Yes, they look official. It looks like a seal of approval or something. Right. It looks like it, it and, and it stays. People don't remove them. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is this? Who made it? <laughs> I know, but who who took it and made it a sticker? Oh, I'm just okay, saying, never mind. We help I each other. You you set them up. I slam them down. Sometimes you st- I set them up. You slam them down. Hey, okay. we're working on unfuck, unfuck you then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eh or meh, uh, this is some of the new pumpkin spice stuff that's coming that's out. That's got to be freaking disgusting. <laughs> But I just show a picture of one thing, and there's a bunch of things to talk about. But this is the Bud Light Seltzer. Now, the seltzer drinker in it, in and of its own, that's a different story. That's a whole different show. That's a whole different segment. I'm not going to go there. But what do you do? You like pumpkin spice everything at this time of year, Mike? I don't like pumpkin spice anything. All right, <laughs> you're talking to a guy who's never in, eaten a strawberry but worked 15 years in produce. <laughs> I am I am the pickiest person you know. Um, I, I don't like seltzer. It, it's uh, somehow it's soda water, but it doesn't taste like soda. It's it, it's disgusting. And I don't know what it is about it. I don't know if it's the sodium or or what. It's just but it's that flavored syrup, whatever it is. It makes it no, a different consistency, maybe. Yes, exactly. But like the the flavored, like the the white claws and whatnot. I'm like, okay, maybe I like the lemon lime or the raspberry. Eh. Not See, really. Not a fan. I think white. A, I think white. I think in the drinking world, white claw is the Nickelback of the drinking world. It, exactly. It, it's the Zima. <laughs> Zima it's, the, it's the Zima of 2020. <laughs> yep. Hey, now wait a second. <laughs> 2020. That was back in the 80s. I remember that oh, being no. in, the, in the 80s, like around 87. White claw is white claw is the Zima of 2020. I understand. All right. Okay. All right. I, I get Clear it. as mud. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Man. Um. Yeah. Not not a fan of any of the seltzers, you know, and it, they, you know everybody else saw that White Claw opened a new, and what they were killing it, and everybody else is in there now. Well, like we we have all kinds of stuff that is like like that here at the house. I don't drink it. Well, I saw a recent. And, uh, I did see a recent commercial for the Bud Light seltzer, and it brings up a good point because when I first saw it, I thought, ew. Bud Light with seltzer water? Oh my God, it's gonna taste like shit. They're, right. they're trying to remarket it and let you know it's not Bud Light, but Bud Light makes right. it. So I, right. I don't know. And, anyway, and it, it, it's not Bud Light making it; it's Anheuser Busch right. making it. They're just trying to, to glom on the, well, the diet or the health conscious person, I guess. And, and the thing I hate about Budweiser as of late in the, in the last ten years or so, they were bought by InBev which is a company that's in Europe somewhere. Like, I don't yeah. know, they make other beers in Europe and stuff. And they, they were purchased. Anheuser-Busch was bought out, but they're still running under that moniker. And they still promote themselves as the American beer. You right. know, everything's red, white, and blue on the cans and all that stuff. Even when they have special cans, it's red, white, and blue. You know, hey, it's, it's very subtle. But they're trying to continue well, that promotion as America's beer. And they're not even in America. Right, and, and the thing is, they didn't start all these wacky promotional cans that celebrate America when they were American-owned. Ironic, isn't it? You know, now they're not American-owned, and they're trying to push it because our the perception that Europe has of the United States is our flag is on everything. Yeah, you know, they they they're not that big on flags, I guess. But yeah, I, I, I remember. Guess really- I I remember going to. Uh, Canada going to a hockey game in Canada we were in Vancouver and I was so excited this is when I was drinking I haven't had a drink in over three years but this is uh maybe seven eight years ago going to Vancouver and Seattle with my brother and seeing a football game we went to Canada went to Vancouver saw a hockey game and we did all this stuff and and it was a cool trip and I was so excited to watch a game a hockey game in Canada with a Canadian team drinking a Canadian beer. I got inside the friggin' place. They didn't serve any Canadian beer. It what? was the brewery. Molson Brewery was. Fiz- I could throw a rock and hit Molson Brewery <laughs> from the stadium. And wow. Molson wasn't even on sale. There was no. It was all Budweiser. And I'm like, are you friggin' kidding me? I came all the way to friggin' Canada to watch a hockey game and I got to drink American beer. Freaking Budweiser's disgusting. Yeah, you know, I'm not a big beer drinker. 
I'm not. Um, I, I like Killian's and I like Bass Ale because of yours truly. Right. Um, but but it, it even if it's fresh, it tastes like skunk beer. Now Michelob, Michelob's a, a little smoother. Michelob I can drink, and that's a Budweiser product. Uh, Yingling, yeah, and that's also now a Budweiser product. So, um, but yeah, not so a fan I, of I'm looking at this article that I pulled up. It happened to be on USA Today. And I happen to put up the Bud Light seltzer with the fall flavors that they have going on here. But USA Today listed a bunch of other things that are pumpkin spice, like pumpkin spice latte, pumpkin yeah. spice donuts. Ugh. Now, here we go. Check these out. These are by the big players, the big boomers, right? Kellogg's pumpkin pop tarts. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Hostess, pumpkin spice Twinkies, and pumpkin Cheerios. Yeah, Twinkies and Pop Tarts. Yeah, that's what I used to call my disabled neighbor back in school. So Bud Light's Pop-Tart. calling that that picture you see up there. They're calling it their fall flannel variety pack. Nice. It, yeah, it has pumpkin spice, but it also comes with, get this, marshmallow flavor. Ew. <laughs> Maple pear and Ew. apple crisp. Okay, apple crisp, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're 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 glomming onto the the hard cider, but really, maple? Like, would they pour freaking syrup on it? Is it, is the can sticky? Kit Kat's putting out Kit Kat pumpkin pie miniatures. <laughs> Werther's, you know, the old band grandpa caramel yeah. treat or whatever. Yeah. yeah, Werther's is putting out original pumpkin spice soft caramels. Ugh. Dude, all right. In in that picture of the the case of Bud Light seltzer, yeah, don't they look like packets of freaking uh, Taco Bell sauce? Yes. <laughs> that, maybe that's why they want you to turn in those packets to bring us full circle from last week's show. Nice. Yeah, it looks like there's packets of freaking uh, Taco Bell sauce on there. Hey, that's if you're some, drinking some... coffee at the house, have no fear. You can get silk dairy free pumpkin spice almond creamer. Or yeah. International Delight Pumpkin Pie Spice Creamer. And Coffee Maid the... is even putting out pumpkin spice flavored creamer. I'm sure there's store brand too. It's it's all in the fridge. We can go check it. Now, wait uh, a second. If you're gone keto, there's still products for you. Ketogenics Pumpkin Spice Zero Carb Natural Protein Blend. That's all one. the name of one product, by the way. Okay. They also have Premier Protein Spice Shake. So if you're a keto person or off the carbs, you can... Uh, you can do that. Ah, wow. pumpkin spice raviolis. Oh, my God, I want to puke. Do you put tomato sauce on that, or what do you do? Wow. Pumpkin <laughs> spice mask. You know, the, the adult mask that you have to wear, supposedly, around. I'm not going to get into all that, but there's a pumpkin spice mask. This way, while you're ma- wearing your mask, you can breathe in pumpkin spice. Interesting. Those are sold out on Walmart.com. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Yankee Thank Candle, God. of course. Pumpkin Spice Candles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the whole pumpkin spice thing start with, with Starbucks. They they opened that, that Pandora's box with the pumpkin spice latte. And now everything needs to be pumpkin spice. They have pumpkin spice doggy treats. <sighs> How does your dog know he should be enjoying pumpkin spice? Do you really... I, well, I, you know, I do know dogs like pumpkin. I, I know one dog that likes pumpkin anyway, so maybe wow. that is the thing. Okay. Well, a freaking dog, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. I know. I know. <sighs> You're going to like this next one here. This next okay. one gets me. That's a sequoia tree out in Correct. California. Yep. They're having those fire. They're having those big fires out there. Mm-hmm. So what do they do? They're going to try to protect these sequoias. So they wrap aluminum foil around the base of them. Okay. I would think they would cook it like a goddamn potato on a barbecue grill. <laughs> right. Now the the thing is that flames aren't higher than eight feet. Right. Forget I, this. The, I guess. People yeah. Who, for people who aren't watching on Twitch, we're, we're looking at a, a picture, and it's uh, two or three, four guys standing around a sequoia tree, and you figure your average guy is five, ten, six foot maybe, you know, and it's wrapped in aluminum, 
but it only goes up eight feet up the tree. So do flames not go higher than eight well, feet? Well, that's what they're saying. These, ground, these are ground flames they're fighting, and sequoias have a natural built-in defense with their bark and the way they're made. And these trees have stood for thousands of years. I mean, there's some that there's some trees that they say are, you know, have been on the earth, been on the earth for more than two thousand years. So wow. crazy. Crazy. I just found that they now that's not really aluminum foil. I mean, don't get some rental wrap out and start wrapping your house plants right, if you're living right. in California. I'm not telling you to do that, of course. I I think that tree right there is one they call General Sherman. It's the single largest living organism in the world. And of course, as you pointed out, that that aluminum foil type wrapper, it's a fire retardant paper made specially for this. It's not just foil. But you know, it looks like foil to me. But anyway. Exactly. How bizarre. I know. I know. I, I, I've never. I would have never thought of that. You know what I mean? It's actually right. that aluminum on the outside is actually woven threads of polyester and fiberglass inside, and laminated with a high temperature adhesive. This, according to Dan Harning, founder of FireZat, a San Diego company that sells that foil. It's not tin foil. It's so perfectly engineered after all these years. Blah 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 blah. This is according to Gizmodo.com. So. Gizmoto. For all you tree huggers <laughs> out there, there you go. Right? It's a big the hug. Trees. And they're only using all sorts of chemicals to save the trees. <laughs> and adhesives. Yeah. yeah that, that should uh, reduce your carbon footprint, right? Yeah, whatever. So, did you ever think, Mike, did you ever go back and think... Never. That, Thank God there weren't cameras and YouTube and all this <laughs> shit when we were younger. Dude, I see it every time I see a freaking, you know, I, I see pictures of, of Prince Harry, you know, naked in freaking Las Vegas. And I'm like, damn, it's a different time now. Yeah, this is crazy. There's a, this is according to Fox News, 15-year-old students arrested linked to, ban, to a banned TikTok challenge after police locate the video of the crime. This is, uh, again, according to Fox News, a Florida teen has been arrested. This is Florida? a future Florida man right there, Florida what? teen. I'm, I'm I'm shocked. Florida teen has been around. His dad's got the. His dad had to bail him out of jail. His dad rolled up like in a '74 Camaro with a mullet and shit. <laughs> Took him right back to the trailer park. So anyway, Florida teen has been arrested in connection to a viral trend dubbed dubbed devious licks. That's what they call this, and supposedly this is now banned on TikTok, in which kids film themselves destroying and stealing school property. To later share the footage on the popular on the popular video sharing app called TikTok. This is this is you're, you're fine. It's hilarious. This is from Bartow High School, which is in the same <laughs> county I went to high school with in Polk County, in the Polk County it district. Was that, the county seat from the county. You now look in. at the picture I put up on TikTok. They've like ripped down a paper towel holder and it's on yep. the floor busted, and there's a toilet. They took like a sit down toilet and they unhinged it from the floor. And put it in the middle of the restroom. You have to like kneel down next to the shitty toilet and uncrank. They went through a lot of friggin' trouble to do this. This wasn't like, right? hey, let's just rip this toilet out. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it takes a little, it takes a lot. And to, to, they took the back of the toilet off, the tank part. I don't know. They and, took that. And what school has toilets that bolt to the ground and are have tanks on the back? It looks like a regular residential toilet. It makes no sense. I don't know. It just it yeah. it the whole thing just is hilarious to me because I think back and I'm like, oh my god, thank God, thank God I tell these stories and people don't know whether yep. I'm lying or not, you know. Yep. And I let it go at that. But yeah, yep. if I had video, if I had access to this shit, if somebody else I was yeah. hanging with, yeah, I'd be done. I'd be incarcerated. Exactly. Ten times over. Now, you ever was a senior prank a big thing when you were in high school? Not really. I mean, we did oh. stuff like that. We we primarily did them to each other, you know. Yeah. But there wasn't... we had senior we had senior cut day. We had better yeah. things to do than than do pranks. Um, now both my kids graduated from uh, from Lake County schools in in Florida, <clears throat> and I tried to convince them to uh, to take their high school and you know take pictures of their high school, and uh, post their high school for sale on eBay. There you go. We're on uh, back in the day Craigslist. Yeah. Great. Would have been a great sure. thing. Uh, try to sell your house, high school on on eBay. That would be a great senior prank. You know, harmless. No one would get hurt. Now, as far as Craigslist, be a little more nasty. I was. I, I told them to take their teachers and put them on Craigslist 
for prostitution. <laughs> yeah, do the, do the whole... Parent of the year right here, folks. That's Mike yeah. underscore Taylor at Taylor Bullpens.com. Bullpens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, uh, put, their, put their phone number in there and, you know, for 20 roses you get this, for 50 roses you get that. But <laughs> my kids being more mature than me, uh, decided that we're not going to listen to dad and we're not going to put <laughs> high school on eBay. We want to graduate. We, we don't exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to get the fuck away from that guy. So according to thehill.com, a Michigan father filed a $1 million lawsuit against the local school district after a teacher cut his daughter's hair. What? Yeah, I'm going to put okay. up a picture of this young lady. I'm not trying to expose her or anything, but... Ooh. Apparently, like another student had brought scissors or had scissors and started to cut the hair of this student and then the teacher intervened and wanted to uh fix it fix it and she fixed it worse it was only like half the head so then the dad had to take the young girl who was obviously devastated she looks like she's what maybe five in this picture here i would uh, less than five i she would has say curly maybe hair. Or four. um so she, his dad had to take her to like a, a a haircut place where they had to fix it up to look like something because it was apparently there's a before and after picture of at least right. one side of her head. What would you do if if when you you know we're talking about school there and your kid's going to school? How would you respond if your child came home and the teacher cut its hair? Uh, well, I got boys, so like it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not that concerned about it. Um, yeah, I'm not. You know, my wife would probably freak out, and she would be the one to 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 take it to the next level. You know, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see something that stupid happening, so I, I have no answer really. Well, look around the world. I mean, that's what we're living in. We're living in a world of stupidity. I mean, that's a that's Mikeism number two. People are stupid. I mean, this stuff happens. I mean. You know, I always imagine, like we talk about, oh, can you imagine back in the 80s, I thought this would be a great product, and now it's a product, or this would be a great place, and now it's a place. And Right. The world is only as screwed up as our imagination will allow it to be. I mean, I, I, I just, we, I'll, I'll try not to get too political, but I'll make a statement here that some may take as political. Uh, if you allow the government to break a law because there's a national emergency. Okay, you with me? Yeah. They're going to create national emergencies so they can break the law. Right. Which makes sense. And and yeah, you, you can you can kind of correlate that to other things too, you know. They everybody talks about the slippery slope and you know, opening Pandora's box whatever the case may be. Yeah, uh, agree agree there too. But now if you look at these pictures, the one with the long hair and the girl with the short hair looks like two different people. Well, obviously, he had to go back and find a picture of her with her hair so he could show it. You know, maybe he hasn't taken a picture yeah. of her in a couple okay. months or something, maybe. I, I say, but the, the after picture looks younger than the before picture. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, all right. Well, I you was know, thinking the opposite. You said five years old. Okay, the girl, and the girl with the long hair looks like she's probably five years old. The girl who has the short hair looks like a baby. Who knows? Um, yeah, but, that's crazy. Uh, you know, I could think, you know, if if that had happened to me, I, I'd be going down to the uh, to the student to the teacher lounge or whatever. I'd have a pair of battery operated clippers in my hand, looking for that asshole that did that. Because I'm gonna shave that bitch bald. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, obviously, not the protocol that uh, that you know it was supposed to happen. You know, something like that happens, you get a hold of uh, you get a hold of the school right off the bat. Or you get a hold of the parent right off the bat. Uh, you know, the school that my boys go to, we have an app that, uh, you know, contacts us immediately. Like, perfect example this morning. Um, we got a, a notice the other day, probably beginning of the week, that my one-year-old, his class, uh, somebody had hand, foot, and mouth disease, which is a, a, a viral thing, and you end up with, like, rashes around your mouth on your hands and possibly on your feet and uh the uh today drop him off at school about 7 30 in the morning come home walk in the door my wife's like hey i gotta go pick up nikki 
he contracted his hand, foot, and mouth disease wow. somewhere at school. So, and, and the thing is, he's had a little bit of a rash around his mouth, but he's he's one, and he sucks his damn thumb. So we thought that from him sucking his thumb all the time, that he's getting it around his mouth. But they cut, noticed a couple spots on his hand, and they just said, "Hey, take him to the doctor." So uh, Nicholas is not allowed back until he sees a doctor. Wow. And uh, yeah, so immediately we got a, a phone call. Uh, Xander bopped his head the other day. We immediately got a, a, a text message saying, hey, he's good. He doesn't say anything hurts. We put ice pack on it, blah, blah, blah. So, you know. By the way, your kid can take a punch. <laughs> right. Jeez. We, we, we get we get pictures through this app and everything, and and they're Johnny on the spot. And for the twenty thousand dollars a year we pay, they Jesus. they better be Johnny on the spot. Yeah, do you have that live video thing where you can log in and see live video of the classroom? No, or no, that's 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 a little creepy. But <laughs> but they, they like I said, they send pictures. We know uh, when diapers get changed. We know when uh, boys go to the bathroom, snacks, activities, all that is all listed. You know, uh, it's oh, I told you, I think a, a couple months ago that there was a glitch somehow. And I get a, a text message saying that my uh, my my kids were signed out of school for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to alarm you. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't my wife. It wasn't me. I think our Twitch app is down, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something's going on here. I don't know. It still shows like we're rolling here, so I'm gonna keep on keeping on. We got about uh, seven minutes left, so cool. I just pulled up. It says we're live on the on the app. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. probably just my phone being a shit. Hopefully, yeah. it'll be like shows before where later on when I'm in post looking at stuff, I like oh shit that really <laughs> did happen. Where'd that go? Yeah, yeah. It, it, the apps. It, I'm just uh, the video spooling, but I have. Uh, it says it's live, so cool. All right, hey, I got I got a question for you. You know, one of All the right. last things we'll wrap up here with here. Who do you who do you think are the tallest people in the world? Who like name where these tall people come from? I'm the tallest people. This is all documented. This is science. Where do the tallest people in the world come from? I'm thinking like uh, Nairobi, Pandora. That's where the <laughs> Pandora. Right? No, not Pandora. Yeah. Well, I'm like thinking, Nairobi, yeah, I'm thinking like, somewhere on the African content or some yeah. continent because, well, let's face it, a lot of tall dudes playing NBA right now that happen to be African American, so that would make sense to me. It's not. So go for okay. go for pick number two. I'll give you one more chance. Um. Uh. You're right. It's the Dutch. The Dutch. <laughs> the Dutch. Yes. Really. This is according to TheGuardian.com. Dutch are the world's tallest people. Hang on, I'm pulling it up here. But they're shrinking. The study shows. <laughs> Poorer okay. diet may explain why the lofty lowlanders are at least one centimeter shorter than the previous generation. Yada yada. The Netherlands. Yada yada. Here we go. With the latest data suggesting that the average 19-year-old man stood just over six feet tall in 2020, while women born in the same year measured five foot six inches. Of course, the real data that they show is in centimeters, because the rest of the world is on the decimal system. We can't seem to get our act together for that. The decimal system? Yeah. You mean the metric system? Yeah, me metric, decimal, <laughs> same thing. It's Everybody's all based on, on tens. System. The, unless you're talking about libraries, then it's yeah, the Dewey, Dewey Decimal, Decimal system. system, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This okay. is uh, again according to Guardian.com. <clears throat> Based on surveys of 719,000 people aged in the 19 to 60, they yada yada report Dutch men born in 2001 are on an average one centimeter shorter than a generation born in the Netherlands in 1980. The Dutch women are 1.4 centimeters smaller. I. Yeah. It, maybe there's an increase in gravity in that part of the world. Maybe they're being forced down. Right? Or, yeah. Or who knows? <laughs> Where do you get this stuff? I don't know. <laughs> okay. What if you're if if you're if you live if you grow up in an African country and then you move to the Netherlands? Are you a Netherlands? Are you an African 
African Dutch. I mean, how's that work? Well, are, are, I'm guessing you're trying to determine whether it's nurture or nature. There you go. Okay. You know, uh, is it your environment that makes you as tall as you are, or is it your your genes and your ethnicity in the in in history? I think it all comes into play. I think it's many little things put together. Yeah. It's incalculable. It's hard to define. I think, but. Right. You know, it proved positive. You look on TV. I mean, there's some tall dudes playing in the NBA right now. But hey, my kid's taller than me. You know, I mean, you're really? taller. Well, than yeah. Me. A lot of people are taller than me. Exactly. I was just gonna <laughs> say that. Everybody's taller. Than I'm you. taller than Paulie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paulie's knuckles drag on the ground too. So, <laughs> love you, Paulie. All right, we got we got a little less than three minutes to go here. Anybody you're gonna give a shout out to? Believe it or not, yeah. Uh, talked about my niece earlier today. Um, did you know that my nephew and my niece both, when they were 15 years old on Labor Day weekend, found out that they were uh, juvenile diabetic? Wow. Yeah, and it's not like a certain time of their life. It was Labor Day weekend they found out. Hmm. Uh, so my niece, who was born the day we went to the Motley Crue concert 21 years ago. Uh, she has an an, ep, uh, an ap, uh, ap, uh, a diabetic episode that comes out that she has something called ketoacidosis. Oh yeah, you've heard about it like in some pharmacy commercial. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she's uh, she's laid up in the hospital, and uh, she should recover. No issues. Hopefully wow. everything's working out good. But yeah, just a little shout out to her and my sister. Uh, I know my sister usually listens. So All hey right. Deb. Well, I want to give yeah. a shout out to, of course, my friend Gino Losi. If you're looking to go fishing anywhere in Florida, he's the man. He'll put you on a monster fish. You can find him anywhere. G I N O L O S I. And of course, check out the Melon Patch Theater in Leesburg. They have comedy thing going on. They have local stuff. There's always something going on there. The yep. the guy who's running community that place, theater. Dustin Levine's doing a great job there. So uh, call up, go see some community theater there, or write him a check, give him a donation, be a sponsor or something. Jesus. So. Anyway, hey, we got a new segment we might explore, but we got a new thing. I don't know if it's a segment. Maybe it'll become a segment, but uh, called Get Off My Lawn, which I think <laughs> Imagine is that. great. Yeah. We've been talking about it and yelling and screaming the phrase for, for weeks now, months yeah. if not. Yeah, so if you're listening or watching 56 here, you're going to have to tune in on 57, episode 57, for the, yeah. the Get Off My Lawn segment here. So let me cue this up. We'll... We'll head out of town for for today, for this show, for this episode. Yep. I'll see everybody next time. Get off my lawn.